Well, I'm so glad you decided to join us today for our continuing season of Lent, this Tuesday Bible study. We are getting so close to that great celebration of Easter, the great feast. This coming Sunday will be Passion or Palm Sunday, in which we certainly do our procession with palms, but also reminded of the passion of our Christ with the reading of the gospel narrative about our Lord's passion. And then a week from this Thursday, guess what we do? Oh, we have Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, a reminder of our Lord's Last Supper, and then of course Friday, Good Friday. How, seems so ironically named, but we reminded on Good Friday, the good news that God loves you so much that God would rather die for you than live without you. That's the good news of that good day. And then, of course, the Easter Sunday, the day of the resurrection, proving again that God has power not just over life, but also over death itself. For not even death can separate us from the love which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, but today we continue this Lenten journey, and uh, we're going to be looking at the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. Uh, so we begin our service today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of saints be with you all. Amen. <laughs> song he knows for those who would like to follow along with the words these words are on the song sheet for Sunday that of course is on the announcement for Sunday service and you're welcome to download that every Tuesday because we always sing a song off of that sheet
Father, you know the burdens that we are bearing today. And they are too heavy for some to bear alone. And so we ask your intervention on their behalf tonight. Pray for those who are hopeless, that they might have hope. Those who were lost in their journey, that they might see a light and find the path that leads them to you. We pray for those who are devastated by loss of loved ones. They might know the consolation of your peace. We pray for those in violence, that you might intervene, that we in turn might stand in the gap to provide for their needs. You know our suffering and pain, God, and so we lift all of these concerns to you this evening and trust in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. The lessons that we read for this season are often, um, often lessons filled with a great deal of hardship and heartache. But they always point us in the right direction. It's uh, in, in our preaching classes back in seminary, we would always talk about making sure that you preached, started with the law. Law, of course, tells you how we have fallen short or shows us that there's no way in this world that we could ever earn God's pleasure. But it always points us to the gospel. The good news. Guess what? The gospel, the good news, is Jesus. Can't go wrong when you get to Jesus. And so I'd like to read to you from Romans 8, remembering that what Paul is trying to do is get us to turn to Jesus. And so we begin with verse 6. To set the mind on the flesh is death. Law, right? Now understand, when he's using the word flesh, he's not just talking about terrible things that people do, giving in to licentiousness and, and uh, adultery and uh, gross things that maybe we should not be doing. He's talking about the dependence upon this, upon me and myself, you know? This is what he's talking about. So it's not necessarily an insidious type of thing or evil type of thing, at least in our human terms. But it's just those who depend upon themselves, the works of their hands. I'm a good person because I've done whatever it is. No, you're not. You know, maybe relatively compared to other human beings, you might be a good person. Okay, good for you. That doesn't impress God much. If you're trying to get to heaven by the works of your flesh, by the works of your hand, you are, unfortunately, trying to get to heaven by the law. Can't do it by the flesh. See how Paul often uses these things interchangeably. Those who live, again, to set the mind on the flesh is death. What happens? If you try to do this, if you try to get to heaven on your own, if you think you're a good person and you think your good works have outweighed your bad works, oh, you're going to be so disappointed. You're not going to get to heaven based on that. It leads to death. These are fleshly things. But to set the mind on the spirit, the gospel, is life and peace. Oh, see, the person who follows Jesus, <laughs> they're not any better than the person who's trying to be a good person by following the law. There's only one difference. They trust that Jesus is going to overcome their lack. That's the difference between a Christian and somebody else. You should try to be good because we should try to be kind and loving. But we shouldn't depend upon this because we make too many mistakes for us to get to heaven by the basis of our good things that we try to do. We're under no illusions as Christians. We can't live this way and expect to get to heaven. We live in the good news of God, the gospel. 
and know that relationship with God comes through this, not through this. This points us to this, reminds us that we fall short. This is why we need him. For this reason, verse 7, the mind that is set on flesh is hostile God because it depends upon itself. We don't need anybody. All right? It does not submit to God's law. Well, wait a minute. He's kind of mixing metaphors. Indeed, it cannot. For those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're trying by the law and by the works of your hands, trying to please God, you will fail. But you are not in the law, you're not in the flesh, Paul says. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. How do you get that? What? Where? You've, got an, you've got an alien life form living inside of you. How did that get there? Because God loves you. And God has provided you with strength, nourishment, courage, inspiration through God's presence and the form of the Holy Spirit. You didn't get it because you did something or prayed a certain way. God just gave it to you. It's an amazing thing. So you're living in the Spirit. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. Oh, this is scary. How do you get that again? We'll talk about it in a minute. But if Christ is in you, through, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies, also through the Spirit that dwells in you. So... You might die. Well, that's kind of what Lent is about. It begins with an affirmation of the mortality of the human beings with the imposition of the ashes upon our foreheads. Remember that you were dust to dust, you shall return. You're going to die. Can't help you there. But even in death, there's life in Jesus. The Spirit is a witness to that inside of us. But then the question becomes, is how do we get this witness? Not a great secret. Maybe you don't feel it, but do you believe in Jesus? You got the Spirit. I can feel this mighty onrush of wind. It doesn't. Sometimes the Spirit comes in a still and quiet voice. Like a whisper. It's not a feeling. It's a promise. Do you see that? So don't base your life on whether you feel the Spirit or not. God has promised you the Spirit, so you have the Spirit. And because you have the Spirit, even though you might die, there is hope of new life. That's the Gospel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for this study that we turn to. It's a reminder of the law. Can't get to heaven that way. Don't have a relationship with you by obedience to that. We can't manufacture getting the Holy Spirit through a litany of prayers or emotions that we try to conjure up. These are just free gifts and we just accept it. I believe in Jesus. I have your spirit as a result. It's a promise that we don't walk through this life alone. And for that, we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, you don't go alone today. I may not be there. I'm on Memorex today, right? I can't always be there for you. Your family can't always be there. But Jesus walks with you and gives you life and hope. So may the God who gives new life be with you and send on you his Holy Spirit that you might be strengthened for your journey and what lies ahead. We ask this all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Look forward to seeing you next week. Blessings to you.